Hi, welcome to Bridge Connection. I, uh, glad you're with us today. Um, I hope you're inside, a little warm outside where we're coming from, right? Uh, so grab your Bible, sit under a, a vent or something where the air's coming in if you can, and, uh, listen to what God would be saying to, to the church. We're up to verse, we're, we're going through Mark, book of Mark. We're now in chapter four. We went through verse 25 yesterday. We're going to pick it up at verse 26 today. And it says, and he said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. Jesus is describing one aspect here of the kingdom of God in this parable. Once the seed, the word of God, the gospel is sown, it sprouts, it grows. The fruit of the seed, the, the kingdom, the church, its citizens will, they, they continue to grow. The growth of God's kingdom involves human hands. The seed has to be sown by, a, by an individual, by, by a person. There simply is no other way that God has designed that his seed would be sown, the seed of the kingdom of God, of what the good news, the gospel is all about. We, you and me, have been entrusted with the sacred duty and honor and challenge <laughs> and privilege, but duty of sowing the precious seed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are the instruments, you and me, we're the instruments that, that God has chosen to share the gospel with the world. The farmer sowed his seed on the ground. In this parable, the, the ground represents the people of the earth who, who need the gospel. And we sow, we should sow the, the precious seed of the gospel throughout the world, Acts 1, 8, and you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses of me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that's what we're supposed to be doing. God wants us, you and me, to, to reach all the people of the world. He wants, he desires, he, he, he longs for the entire world to hear his good news. And God has sent his followers out into the world to sow the seed of the gospel. And there are followers all over the world, missionaries all over the world, people all over the world telling scores of individuals that God loves them. And it's just, it can be one-on-one -on -one or it can be in crowds or groups. But notice that the seed is, is scattered or cast. It's, it's thrown. The sower takes a handful of seed and scatters it broadly as he just walks along. This is how we are to sow the seed of the gospel. As we walk through life, as we do life, as we take care of business, we are to scatter the seed broadly, sharing the gospel with, with people we meet along the way. And uh, God shows you when to open your mouth, shows me when to open my mouth. Do we do it always like we should? No, we don't. We, but we need to get better at that. When, no God, when we know God says to say something, we need to say something. Uh, it's better to be wrong and say something when we haven't been told. It's not going to do any harm than not to say something when God is leading us. But we need to be sharing. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, Jesus said in Matthew 28, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Verse 27, and should sleep, Look about 26, tied together. The kingdom of God as if a man should scatter seed on the ground, verse 27, and should sleep by night and rise by day, and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. So the sower or farmer uh, plants his seed and then just goes about his regular routines, whatever, whatever he's doing in life. He just continues to, to move on and do it. He sleeps, he gets up, sleeps and gets up. And while he carries out the routines of his life, while he's just living life, the seed germinates. It 
springs up and at some point it grows. The point is this, the seed grows by its own virtue. The seed uses the sun, water, air, earth to grow, but the power to germinate, to break forth and grow is of the seed itself by its own virtue. It's, it's not man who makes the seed grow. We don't even know how the mysterious growth takes place. The secret of life and the secret of growth is way beyond my ability to comprehend. We discover things, we invent things, we rearrange things, we develop things, but we do not ever create, not in the real sense of creation. Ex nihilo, it means out of nothing. We never take nothing exists and create something out of that, out of that nothing. The same is true with the kingdom of God, with the growth of believers, both, both um, individually and and corporately together. Growth, growth is not of, of of man. Growth is of God. You know, it's the spirit of God that that takes the gospel and changes a person's heart and causes that person to, to grow. It's the spirit of God that, that, that recreates a person spiritually, that causes a person to be born again and, and grow in grace. <laughs> you know, I've, I've, I've watched so many people change over the, the many years I've been in ministry and, you know, and, and I've, I've watched people change, but I've noticed it's always God doing the work. It's always God. John 3, 5, Jesus answered and said unto them, truly, truly, really, really, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. It says in Ephesians 2, 8, 9, 9, for by grace you are saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It's the gift of God. Even the faith you have to believe God is, the, is a gift from God not a result of works, so that none of us will ever be able to boast. The ground or the soil where the, the seed has been scattered can hinder, slow the process of growth. Seed sown into some ground bears only 30%. We talked about that. Some 60%. Very few, 100%. Verse 28. For the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. So the farmer sows his seed with all the confidence in the world that it will grow. Not knowing how, but knowing that it will grow. Jesus noted that the earth bears fruit by itself. Obviously, the Greek word is the source. Our, our English word the, the, for, for, that, for that word that it goes by itself is where we get the word automatically. It means spontaneously, of necessity, self-moving. The idea is that the earth brings forth fruit automatically by its very nature. Growth is sure. Growth is inevitable. But two conditions are essential. The ground must be good soil or ground. We saw that over in Mark, the same chapter in verse 20. And the seed must be sown in the ground. If these two conditions exist, then growth is both inevitable and unstoppable. Even a small blade of grass will find a crack in the pavement. Nothing can stop the seed from growing. You know, as a, as a believer, you can just rest, be rest assured that you're a child of God and God will complete the work of grace in your life. The grace of God planted in your heart is unstoppable. As believers, our confidence in God is in God, not in our own, our own flesh and weak efforts. 
Therefore, there is no reason, no excuse for being down and discouraged, withdrawn and depressed. You know, remember John 15, 5, and Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he is that, he, it is he who bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. <laughs> so we need to understand that for it is God who works in us, both to will and to work for his good pleasure. So, you know, we do our best and we falter at times and we get convicted. I'm not talking about just living in sin. I'm talking about we fall and we make mistakes and we do stupid stuff. God convicts us. We repent. He washes us off. We keep on moving. We keep on growing because of his grace. Growth is constant, but it's gradual, ever so gradual. See, when we come to Jesus, we want just instant maturity. I remember when I became a, when I was a new believer, I, I, I wanted to know everything and do everything and listen to everybody that taught a Bible study and go to every Bible study that was happening. And you know, I, wanted to, I wanted to grow, I wanted to grow, I wanted to grow. You know, we, we're in an instantaneous society. We want our, you know, laptops and our iPads and our telephones to instantly come on. And we want to be able to instantly talk to somebody around the world by pressing a few buttons. And we want instant knowledge by, you know, searching something on, on the internet so we can find an answer to something that really probably wasn't that important to us. You know, but, but we want that. But our life with God, with God our growth as believers, the seed is sown, and then day after day, night after night, all passes before the blade ever springs up. Then many more days and many more nights pass before the ear forms. It takes weeks before the full ear of corn appears. Growth does not take place. Excuse me, growth that does take place. It's constant, but it's gradual. What I was going to say is growth is not fast. It's not quick. It's a slow process. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. And we need to trust God in that. We're told in the word that we are being changed from glory to glory is by the Holy Spirit. Every time we experience his presence, there's some change going on, but we don't recognize that change immediately, but, but God does. Just little stuff's going on. Growth is of God. And we need to trust and to wait on God for that growth. But we have to be active, working and trusting and believing and having faith. There is no such thing as inactive faith or waiting, not to God. Faith and waiting on God are, are active. They both serve and, and they work. And this glorious truth of absolute sure growth, not a doubt, not a maybe so, not nothing else, it's sure growth of being secure in God's promises is uh, abused by a lot of people. You know, they can, they can do whatever they want. And I um, heard somebody say one time, um, let the church grow without me. It's okay. <laughs> so I just don't want to serve. I'm only part of the ser I'm only part of the serving or something like that. I don't remember the exact wording, but it was, it was just just really off the cuff, and it broke my heart. Why would we want to do that? Well, I, I want to do anything God wants me to do. Growth requires probably more than anything else. Patience, and trust. We're told in 2 Peter 3.18, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and to the day of eternity. Let's look at verse 29. But when the grain ripens, immediately puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Eventually, the seed grows to maturity. The fruit does, does ripen. 
The day comes when the corn is fully grown and is ready to be harvested. By pointing out this fact, Jesus is teaching at least a couple of things here. First, our sowing does bear fruit. Jesus does honor his word. And it never returns to him void. Never. As we sow the seed of the gospel, we can be assured of reaping some harvest. All we need to do is take that step of faith and sow the word. What an encouragement. What an encouragement to, to, to believers. How we should be challenged to work for our Lord. We are assured of results be, before we ever labor. God assures that that, that, that fruit will come. <laughs> you know, and remember Jesus was standing at, at uh, the well with the Samaritan lady and uh, she'd gone to get the people in town to come out and see who Jesus was because she was convinced by things he said that he was the true Messiah. And when so they're coming back out there and, and he says, uh, looks at his disciples in, in John 4 and, and uh, he says, do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, <laughs> lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. It's already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. John four thirty five and 36. So I told you firstly, the believer's sowing does bear fruit. I think that's one of the things he's saying here. The second thing I think he's saying is this, that we as believers ourselves are harvested. We are taken to heaven when our growth is completed. When we have done all that God wills for us and we have done all that we are going to do, God then escorts us home forever. Oh, tell me, that's not encouraging. Uh, I've lost family in the last while. I know they're in heaven. I've lost good friends. I lost a good friend just a couple of days ago. Very, very close and special friend. It's hard to let go. But his work was done. He was through what he had to accomplish was finished. So he was harvested and taken home and received a statement from the Savior himself. Well done, good and perfect servant. Enter into the joys of your Lord. Prepared a place for you. So my heart can rejoice in that. We don't always see the fruit. We don't always see things happen, but we're never gonna see things happen unless we begin to sow. So we need to begin to, we need to, begin to pray diligently that God will put people in our lives to talk to, whether it's family, friends, or strangers. It makes no difference. All we need to do is begin to speak and God will give us the words. If we do nothing more than share with somebody what God has done in our lives. I once was, but now I am. You fill in the blanks. People want to know what God has done for you and what he might do for them. But share the truth. We were sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe on him would not perish, but have everlasting life. How do I know we're saved? How do I don't know I'm saved? Believe in my heart, Jesus Christ is Lord, and confess with my mouth. Confess that with my mouth. That's it. So we need to open our mouths and confess it, maybe a little more than we've done, because there's people that need to be harvested. We, they may look at us strange. They may walk away. They may don't want to talk to us. Maybe we're handing them a gospel of John or a tract we have or something or just a handshake or just telling them about life with Jesus. 
But I'll tell you what, we talked about it a few minutes ago. His word will not return void. When we send it out in his power, when he uses us to send his word, that's all he wants to do. It's not us doing it, it's him using us. He just, we are weakened vessels, we open our mouth, begin to talk and he'll do the work. Holy Spirit will do the work. But we have to be obedient. Father, we thank you for the truth of this. I stand in line with everybody else that is standing before you now saying, Lord, we have not always been honorable in sharing the word as often as we should, but we desire to be. We desire to be the men and women you've called us to be, to speak up the truth of your word. When you give us the opportunity. God, prepare hearts for later today or tomorrow, Lord. Prepare hearts that you're making ready to hear the gospel that you are going to speak through us. And do that in each one of our lives somehow tomorrow, Lord, as we walk in obedience and we'll remember, whoa, we prayed this prayer and we will speak with confidence. Thank you, Jesus. It's in the name of your son, Father, and he's our Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus Christ, we ask these things. Amen. Hey, Jesus really loves you. <laughs>